I'm Jessica, welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for being here. Um, go ahead, if you like anything in this video while you're watching along, give it a big thumbs up. It not only helps my channel, but it helps YouTube suggest videos for you to watch that they think you might actually like. So go ahead and hit that like button at any time during this video if you like something. And if you wouldn't, if you do like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you follow along with the channel and hit that little bell after you hit the subscribe button. That way you get notified anytime I post a new video. So welcome to my channel. In this channel, we're gonna be doing all kinds of DIYs, especially farmhouse DIYs, and then like specific holiday DIYs because I love holidays. And we're also gonna be doing some decorating and some other just homemade DIY things, especially having to do with our furry friends because I'm also a pet parent coach and dog trainer. So I love doing homemade DIYs for our furry companion. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And then once you do that, make sure you uh, smash that bell. That way you get notified every time I post a new video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a few crafts and actually <laughs> some of my footage was lost, but I'm gonna show you these really cute signs. A lot of this is, or some of this is from the Dollar Tree, some of it is not. So this is a Dollar Tree sign, and this is another Dollar Tree sign. What is not Dollar Tree, but very inexpensive and super cute are these DIY throw pillows that I made. So let's go ahead and show you how to make all of these. Real quick, before we get started into all of these super cute DIYs, question of the video. Since we're doing some Halloween DIYs and these super cute sugar skull Halloween throw pillows, let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Freddie, Jason, or Michael Myers? I'll let you know at the end which one's my favorite, but go ahead and post in the comments. Let me know which one is your favorite and why. And also, really quick, I wanted to just show you this. Kim's in my shot. Here's my dog. This is my dog, Kim. Okay, so I just wanted to show you real quick. This is not a DIY, but this one is so super cute and it kind of goes along with the, it's a sugar skull theme. I found this little guy at Ross for like, I wanna say it was $7.99. So, I thought it was a really good deal for this size of a statue. He's not super heavy. I absolutely love decorating with cats and dogs just because I love cats and dogs. I have cats and dogs. I'm just one of those um, weirdos that likes to decorate with cats and dogs. And he was just so stinking cute. He's got the sugar skull. He's holding a bone in his mouth. He's got the little heart right here. All these little embellishments the um, like skeleton features, which you would expect to see on, you know, the sugar skull. Uh, he's even got a little heart right here on his head. I mean, a flower. Why did I say a heart? Probably because he's got a heart right down here. Anyway, I love this one. And even though it's not a DIY, I just wanted to share it with you because maybe your Ross has some like this too, and you can go and grab some or grab one for your Halloween decor. He's super cute. Woof, woof. <laughs> All right. Um, Again, post in the comments. Tell me how much you love him because I know I do. Now, let's get to these DIYs. Okay, so I told you I lost the footage on some of these signs, but basically what I did with this trick-or-treat sign from Dollar Tree, all I did was take some uh, twine and I made a little bow that replaced the kind of cheapy white bow that came on top of this pumpkin. Um, and I also took some of that jute string and wrapped around the top and the bottom with just some um, hot glue. Now with that harvest sign, 
All I did was I took two of the signs from Dollar Tree, painted them with a linen chalk paint, and then I embellished with a brown acrylic paint. I used the metal harvest sign that I also painted brown, and then I hot glued everything together. Uh, really simple, but now I'm just taking a popsicle stick and I'm hot gluing it to the back to add a little bit of um, extra structure to it. Uh, one thing I do want to mention that with that harvest sign, it did take uh, about three coats of the brown acrylic paint. The same color brown I used to embellish the uh, wood signs to kind of make it look more like an actual like palette piece and not just straight you know, linen color over the two uh, box signs. These rectangular signs are, are pretty simple to find at Dollar Tree. I also, after I painted the harvest sign, I just took my fingernail and I distressed it a little bit in certain areas to make it look just a little more rustic. Now, here we are with the... Um, Halloween throw pillows that we're gonna make. All I did was I take took these bar towels that actually my mom sent me. I think she got them from TJ Maxx. You can normally find these at Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, for generally between five ninety nine and seven ninety nine. Um, I thought these would be really cute as throw pillows. So all I'm doing one of the sides of each of these has this black fringe on it. So what I'm going to do. If you choose bar towels that don't have the black fringe, it's gonna be easier for you. Now, of course, I sped this up because I didn't want this um, video to be an hour long, but what I did on mine, because each of mine have just one edge that has fringe on it, I'm gonna cut mine each in half, and that way I'm gonna make one pillow that has fringe on the top and the bottom, and one pillow that doesn't have any fringe at all which you saw in the very beginning of the video. One of them had fringe and one of them did it. So if you choose bar towels or kitchen towels that do not have any fringe on them, this is gonna be a lot easier for you. Um, mine just happened to have fringe on them. And of course I took my fabric cutting, um, my fabric cutter and I was having a hard time with it. I hadn't used it in a really long time and honestly I was a little bit nervous <laughs> videoing myself. Um, so now I'm just cutting the two pieces in half. They're not going to match up exactly but that is okay. Um, they don't have to match up exactly because what we're going to do and you'll see here in just a minute is we're going to take some stitch witch and stitch these together and we're actually gonna form the seam on the inside. Now, you'll see here in just a minute, um, if you do have the fringe, I kinda messed up on my first, first go around at this because I wasn't thinking about needing the fringe to be on the outside. So if you don't have fringe, this is gonna be so much easier for you. If you do have fringe, then don't do what I do the first time around. <laughs> do what I do the second time around. So I'm just matching mine up, the ones with fringe, the ones without fringe. And of course you see they're not gonna match up exactly, but that's okay because all of that extra is just gonna be on the inside of the pillow anyway. So you're gonna see here, I'm trying to match up, um, make sure my fringe is going to be both on the top and the bottom of this particular pillow. And I'm just going to use some stitch witch like you see here. I'm pulling it out of the packaging and making sure that my iron is very hot. And the stitch witch actually tells you, um, follow the instructions on it, it tells you to kind of hold it on there for 10 seconds I believe. And um, what setting? I think it said to put it on the cotton setting. So make sure you're putting it on the correct setting on your iron and I was just making sure my iron was hot enough. So now I'm just trying to figure out, I'm placing the uh, pattern side that I want to be on the outside of the, uh, uh, ooh, I can't think now, these are towels. <laughs> it's gonna be on the outside of the throw pillow. I'm putting them on the inside and I'm putting down, um, because this is just a wood table, I'm putting down a, um, a towel so that I don't, the heat doesn't mess up the table. So make sure you don't mess up any of your wood surfaces either. So you're gonna see here, if you don't have fringe, do what I'm doing now. If you do have fringe, learn from me and don't do what I'm doing now, <laughs> basically. So um, 
because I have fringe, I want to make sure that the fringe is going to be on the inside or yeah, on the inside of my seam and not the outside of my seam. So the first go around, um, well, the side here is going to be perfectly fine, but you're just going to see how I'm going to do this and get this all put together. So I'm just taking my stitch witch and I'm laying it down to where the two seams are going to match up. And I want this to be really, you know, as straight as possible. So um, I'm taking my iron and I didn't follow the instructions at first, so it didn't quite stick, but I'm going to go back and actually hold it on there for the full 10 seconds like the stitch witch instructions tell me to do and it worked perfectly. Um, so if you don't have any fringe on your towels, this is exactly how you're going to do it. Um, and then we're just going to make sure we get it all the way around so we don't have any holes on that one particular side. Now, here's where I messed up. And fortunately, it was really easy to fix because I am just using Stitch Witch. So if you don't have fringe, you can do this. You can do exactly what I'm doing here and um, just <laughs> Stitch Witch the two pieces together. So I'm going to show you in just a minute. I realized that I messed this up and I'm going to pull it back apart and redo it the way it actually needs to be done. <laughs> so I'm sitting here thinking now, oh no, I really need this fringe on the inside. So I left this in just so you could see that um, it's okay. It's going to be okay. So uh, the stitch which is really easy to work with. I'm so glad that I chose to use it over anything else. Um, so now you see I just folded under uh, the fringe and now I'm going to take that um, that's kind of seam that I made now and stitch which that down to the bottom um, section it's going to be our pillow. And this way, now I'm doing it the right way, um, this way the fringe is going to be on the outside of the uh, throw pillow, like I want it to be, and like you see in the very beginning of the video. So just keep going around. We are using Stitch Witch, like I said, so keep going around, hold it down. I said, I do think it was like 10 seconds. It, it told me to, to to set it down, the iron down on the cotton setting. I really love this stuff. I use this, um, actually I, I had to go to a funeral and I had to travel for a funeral. And so I had to buy a dress for a funeral because I just didn't have any dark colored dresses at all. And so I bought the dress, it fit well, and then I get where I'm going and it's the day of the funeral and the hem is out in my dress. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I had like, I, I, I had to leave the house. I was all ready to go and I look down and I see my hem is out and fortunately I was at my mom's house and she had some stitch witch so I really quickly like just pulled my dress off got some stitch witch fixed the hem with the iron and I was out the door in like less than 10 minutes so this stuff is like um awesome I think I got this one at Target for two dollars and some change but that roll of stitch witch is going to last me a really long time so it's well worth the investment and I have a sewing machine but guys I'm just not good at sewing I mean I can sew by hand okay but that's a pain in the butt and it takes forever and really the only time oh I just got the tag off there because I didn't want that on the inside even though it would only be on the inside I'm being kind of like weird about it you don't have to do that if you don't want to but um the stitch which was like a lifesaver and I'm not really great with the sewing machine it like sees me coming and jams up because it knows it's me or something I don't know <laughs> but um the only time I really hand sew anything is when I'm doctoring my dog's toys um because sometimes they get little holes in them and I don't like that so every once in a while you know I, I wash her toys regularly and if there are little holes in them um uh, you know, I go ahead and sew them up at that time. So now what I'm doing, I left a little hole in one of the sides so that I can pull the fabric back through and then I can stuff it with um, some pillow fill. So I'm going to show you, I actually, 
I lost, I think I lost the footage for the second pillow that I did, but again, it was much easier because it didn't have the fringe on it, but it basically just do the exact same thing. Um, except, you know, if you don't have fringe, you don't need to tuck that under. And now we're going to go ahead and stuff the pillows. And I want to show you, um, it is so much cheaper if you just buy one of the like cheapest pillows from Target or Walmart. And I think I got this one from Target. So it's so much cheaper than buying the actual stuffing from like uh, Joanne Fabric or even at Target or Michael or um, Target or Walmart. Even if you just buy the stuffing, it's so much more expensive. Just buy the pillow and unstuff it. So that's what I did here. I want to say this pillow was $4 at Target and I had enough stuffing for both of these throw pillows and I have some left over. Um, and of course it depends on how like how much stuffing you want in your pillows. I'm really happy with the amount of stuffing that are in my pillows. These are just decorative throw pillows. So they don't need to have a ton of support. Like I'm not laying my head on them or anything like that. Um, so it's completely up to you as to how much stuffing you actually want inside of your pillows. But I just bought one pillow from Target. And like I said, I believe it was $4 and it stuffed both of my throw pillows and I have some left over. So, I mean, you really can't, be that pricing. If I were to have bought the pillow stuffing from, you know, just the the craft section, I probably would have had to have bought, bought two or three um, things of it, and I would have spent just as much as if I had just bought throw pillows. So get the get the cheapy pillows from Target or Walmart in the bedding section um, and stuff your pillows. Now what I'm gonna do, and I should have turned the camera around for this, but the section that is open where I filled it, I'm just folding that um, under and I'm using the stitch switch and the iron to seal that hole up so that the pillow is fully formed and I don't have a big hole in it with stuffing seeping out. So it took me just a couple of tries. Um, with the, oh, I had to plug the iron back in, I think. <laughs> but it, it just took me a couple of goes with, um, uh, you know, be very careful here and make sure you're not burning yourself because even though, like, you're going to see here, I think in a minute, um, even though I'm not actually touching the metal part of the iron to my hand, the steam from the iron is super, super hot. So just be really careful. Um, and I'm making sure right here that I have all of my fringe outside of my seam. Um, but I'm just taking the stitch witch and I, I'm taking those sections and just kind of folding them under so that the seams match all the way from the top to the bottom of the pillow. And it was just like super hot from the iron being there. You saw my fingers kind of pull away. Um, so yeah, we're just going to take the stitch witch and get those all stitched back up. I was super happy with the way these turned out. Um, I think I, yeah, I had, I'm taking like tiny little pieces because I want to make sure I get every single section. And honestly, it, it is a little bit more difficult to just get like piecemeal on these, on these little sections you got to put back together. But I, it was well worth it. All of, it really didn't take that long. Probably, I want to say half an hour, maybe 40, 45 minutes total. It took me to do all of these and I was just like fluffing the pillow there. Um, so I'm going to do the second pillow now, which was so much easier than the first one. I didn't have to redo it because I didn't have the fringe on it. So I literally just took these and put these face to face. Um, so I was working on the on the inside of the pillow. What what is on the inside of the pillow now was on the outside what I was working on. Um, so they were like the patterns were face to face down, and I just took my stitch switch um, all the way around three of the sides and halfway around the fourth side, and I didn't have to worry with the fringe, so it was so much easier. I really like the way the fringe looks though. It makes the pillow, um, I don't know, just look more expensive. And so I'm really happy that I decided to go ahead and use the fringe, even though I had to um, cut 
the two bar towels in half. If you don't want to cut the bar towels in half, you don't have to. That's one less side. If you don't have fringe on them like mine did, that's one less side that you're going to have to stitch which. So you can just fold them, in, like literally fold them in half. And that's one less side that you don't have to stitch which. So I would recommend doing that if you don't have any fringe, unless you want to mix up your patterns like I did here. So that was another thing that I really liked about um, cutting these in half is that I, I mixed my patterns. So I didn't have one towel that was like a spider web all the way around. I had sugar skulls on one side of each and spider webs on the other side of each. And of course the sugar skulls were different. Um, I just, I really liked, or I'm sorry, that's not even true. There were sugar skulls all the way around on one of them, but two different kinds of sugar skulls. Um, but I just, I liked that it kind of gives them, I can, I can mix and match my look depending on how busy I want it to look or how not busy <laughs> I want it to look. Um, and that's like kind of another thing about using these bar towels or kitchen towels is that you really can play around with it and make um, each side of the towel, uh, each side of the, the throw pillow look a little bit different. Like they match up because they're both, they're Halloween, um, themed obviously. So they match up. They're not like, you know, one side's Halloween and one side's Easter or anything like that, but you can really mess with, you know, play around with these. And it's just so stinking cute. I'm so glad that I decided to use the fringe parts on both of these. And, yeah, they're just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so here's some just still pictures that I took of them. And here in a minute, I'm actually going to show you, like, I, I just had them sitting on the couch with me. And they're just a fun little addition to our Halloween decor. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Not only does it help my channel, but it also helps YouTube to figure out what kind of videos you like so that they can suggest videos for you to watch. And if you like DIYs, if you like farmhouse decor, if you like anything to do with your furry family members, go ahead and click that subscribe button and then smash the bell. That way you get notified every time I post a new video. I really appreciate you guys being here. Let me know in the comments how much you love these pillows. I'm actually going to post a link in the description to some similar pillows. If you just don't want to DIY them or you can't find, um, the specific types of kitchen towels that you want to, to make pillows out of. I'm going to put a link in the description to some really cute sugar skull uh, throw pillows on Amazon. They're really inexpensive. If you have Prime, maybe you can even get them the next day. So I'm going to put a link in the description below. I really, really love how these pillows turned out. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here. I'll see you guys in the next video.